Hi, welcome to Two Non Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. I love that you like pretending to be in producer mode. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, and we're li- we're live here in New York City in London, where two comedians have little going on. <laughs> <laughs> One of them talks to themselves. Um, Which is like not yeah. true. I'm like overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed, but I know, I know. I'm sure I am there's proud. Some- you're I'm proud. So glad that- oh, I was gonna say I'm just so glad the universe staggered it. So like I was like losing my mind three weeks ago, and now you're losing your mind for your TV taping. Yeah, but your your pep talk was better than mine. Yours was an hour. Mine was like five minutes. I was like, you got this, boo. And you're like, thank you. <laughs> you actually, no, you gave me some real... So I'm actually going to fight you on that. I just... It takes me longer to get to the point. Like, they think that's the only difference. Like, I've always been a long... That's my jokes are like that. My combos are like that. My advice is like that. Any... Because, like, there's... I really like um, Adam Grant. I've talked about his books. Like, um, uh, uh, crap. I've read two of them so far. Give and Take is the one that really had influence. And then I just finished the other one, which is... I talked about it. I can't remember. But, but... What I like, I follow him on Instagram and his stuff is so dense. It'll be like two lines and it'll be like, I'll think about it for days. And then like, you're like, you gave me such a great pep talk. And I was like, it, it, I'm sure a better writer would have been able to do it in five minutes. I know, but I didn't need five minutes. I needed an hour. I needed you to drill that into me. Even if you said the same thing for an hour, because you would say something really nice and I would negate it. And then you'd go, no, and here's your supporting evidence. And then I'd go, maybe. And you go, okay, here it is again. And I'm like, I'm starting to believe you. <laughs> well, maybe, so, okay, so maybe I'm like, like, um, like a court, like a, like a, like a lawyer in court that has to show so much evidence to prove the point for, for literally like, so somebody doesn't go to jail. You know what I mean? Like, like it has to be so well crafted and nothing you, you can't poke any holes in it so that somebody actually I like that that makes me feel slightly better yeah there you go um what was I gonna say um I had a I thought you'd appreciate this I had a coffee date in my car with uh with hurry because he's like can you hang out I was like no I have to move my car and by move it I mean I just have to sit in it wait for the street cleaner you know, the street sweeper to come and then move back. He's like, I'll sit in the car with you. And I was like, oh, yeah. I now have like a list of like, that's how you know you're a top tier friend is if you've sat in my car with me drinking coffee. Like I literally. I've 100% done that. I love doing course it. Of course you have. Of course you pretty, have. Pretty soon. What's his face? Um, Who's that late night host that nobody loves? Um, <laughs> oh, Corden? Uh, James Corden. Yeah. Like he's English, yeah. right? Yeah. He's terrible. Yeah, pretty soon he'll, he's going to have like a segment like Liz Mealy's car and he's just going to talk to celebrities in your car and you'll just be there getting your work done. <laughs> yeah, like, Do I even get money for this? This is insane. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I told her, he was like, this is, a, this is fun. We can do this again. I was like, all right, comedians sitting in cars, having coffee, not, no one, not being recorded. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> comedians sitting in cars, not getting parking tickets. Yeah. <laughs> My mom, because my mom's, you know, when she comes to visit, I'm like, hey, I got to sit in my car. And she's like, I'll sit with you. And she thinks it's, she thinks there should be a TV show about it. She thinks it's so funny that my entire block sits in their car. The street sweeper comes. We all move to the left. The guy sweeps. And then we all sit. And then she goes, well, you did it. You can leave now. I go, no, because if the cop comes at any point between 11 and 1230 and you're not in your car, they'll assume you didn't move it, even though you did, even though there's no debris under your car and you will get a ticket. So you have done your civic duty and still get a ticket. So you have to even though you did it, you moved, you still have to sit in your car for an hour and a half. I think I think it would make a good indie movie that and um, when I was in L.A. and I had an electric car, I had to go and get. Um, I had to fill up, I had to recharge it before I brought it back to the rental place. And like, because you have to wait so long, cause there was only one working electric plug. And, uh, and so I was just waiting with this other person for 40 minutes. And so it was like, oh, it was a good meet cute. Like if we had like hit oh, it off, mom. you know, yeah. like, oh, so what do you, what do you do? He's like, I'm a music producer. I'm like, that's cool. I'm a comedian. <laughs> and, like, and I was like, I'm going to go to the tar- target and get a cup of coffee. Do you want coffee? And he's like, oh yeah, I'd love a cup of coffee. You know, 
And then from the, we're stuck in one place. Good short it's, film, it, anyway. Yes, and it's very cheap because you're in one location. But it is how I met. Like, I lived in my last building for s- almost seven years, and I only knew one neighbor. Actually, that's not true. I met a couple of old neighbors because I we had three steps. Like, we were on the first floor, but there were still technically three steps, and I would hold like help an old lady get, like, her groceries up um, to go to the elevator. So I met a couple of old ladies, but truly didn't really know anybody in my in my building except for when my car died and street sweeping was coming, and I asked this guy to jump my car, and it turned out that he had, like, lived in that building since he was a child. He was, like, in his 20s or whatever. His name was Eddie. I still remember his name because I was like, I know somebody in my building. Um, but I've met half the people in my building because when I first moved there, I was like, oh, can you like double park your car? And they're like, no, because the other side is paid parking and da, 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 da. So I like ended up not only meeting them and talking to them, but we now like we all have each other's phone numbers to be like, hey, did I get a ticket? Hey, did it, did the street guy come? Hey, you know, da, 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 da. like, like yeah. there's even if all we talk about is our cars, we now have like and then we shit talk the street sweeper because sometimes he doesn't even give us time to move over. He just plows like through and doesn't do his job. And that drives me nuts. It's one thing to sit in your car all day. It's another thing to sit in your car all day for no reason because the guy didn't do his job. street. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, that's my that's my boring Tuesday. Well, that's cool. Do you feel good about your taping? Um, I feel as ready as I'll ever be. I feel like I just, I mean, what worries me most is flubbing and rushing and, um, forgetting parts of my jokes. Cause when the nerves come in hard and fast, they, I do like, like blocks of memory will just disappear, but I have to remember, I just have to remember like, I can just say it again. It's a taping. It's magic. I can just say it again. And also, um, yeah, so I just remember, I just need to like have fun with it and deliver it like well. And if I don't deliver it well, do it again, but have enough confidence to do it again. Because I remember with my Comedy Central Live, I I screwed up a couple times, but I didn't have the confidence to be like, I'm going to do that again, you know? So I just kind of like, I think I flub in that, in that like seven minute clip. I do mess something up. And but I just like, didn't start over because you you don't have the confidence. You're like, ah, I got to keep going because everyone's yeah. waiting. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it is a skill set to one, repeat the words if you flubbed it and they were important. Um, but also, like, it's scary, but I've done it where I'm like, nope, that's wrong. Let me say it again. Like, you know what I mean? And like, I think because we're perform- we're live performers and we've spent the whole time, like, you don't get a redo in a live performance, so you learn to work with whatever came out of your mouth or almost sacrifice the joke. You're like, ah, that one didn't work because I fucked it up. Doesn't matter. Mm. So it's like you've spent your entire career knowing that you have one take, but it doesn't, it is what it is, and there's no redo. So to yeah. retrain your brain to, uh, I'm not performing for these couple hundred people, I'm performing for. 4,000, Liz. <laughs> Sorry, 4,000. Sorry. I'm not performing just for 4,000 people. I'm performing for truly millions, right? And yeah. I have to <laughs> make it worse. I'd love to make it worse for you. Um, <laughs> truly millions. But it's like, you know what I mean? Over time, that's the amount of people that are going to see it. And, and, and it's... I said something to Evan before my taping, which is like, he he was saying the same thing. Like, you can redo it. We can do pickups, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but I want the people there to have a good time. He goes, I know you don't want to hear this, but those people don't matter. And I was like, they they do matter. I know. Yeah, I know they do, but they don't. Yeah. But, you know, you, 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 it, that, again, that's also hard because, again, we're such live performers. And those are the people giving us the reactions, but like, I also doing this as many times as I have, it's like anything could be fixed in the edit. You just got to let it, let it go. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm following somebody who's the exact opposite of me as a performer. So, um, like there's like nothing in my control. So I just, I just have to say the jokes to my liking and that's it. That's all I have to remember. Yeah. And you'll do great. Cause you're great. Thank you. Yeah. That's all you have to remember. You're like, I'm great. I'm going to do great. 
Actually, your words did help a lot. Like I, when I performed at Top Secret after our phone call, I was like just on fire because I was like, I'm amazing because yeah. you helped. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, no, she gave me this pep talk too early. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to need you to redo all of that, yeah, that entire yeah. hour before on Wednesday at 6.15. <laughs> I believe I told you many people can go fuck themselves. So that was, I mean, that's always enjoyable for me where you're like, but what about? And I was like, she can die. He can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> there is many, if anybody listened to it, many egos were bruised and murdered that day. So. Yeah. And I was in a parking lot when I was talking to you because I got a cup of coffee. And so I was doing, um, it's almost what Lunchbox does when I go to feed him. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but he circles my island while I'm putting the food in the dish. And it's like this weird kind of excited habit. And I was circling a parking lot as I talked to you for like mm. an hour. So nice. I am my cat. That circling has like really got you into the zone. It did. And the coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was, I was pretty caffeinated to tell everybody to go fuck themselves. Um, <laughs> I'm also caffeinated right now. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, should we get into announcements? Um, yes. I drank mine. Um, uh, when does this come out? Okay. Uh, soon, maybe not when this comes out, but I think the following week I'll be in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Um, then I have a show in, I think where I have shows. I have a show in Westchester in November. Oh, I'm going to be in Bend, Oregon and Portland, Oregon. Portland is selling uh, fast. So if you're going, get your ticks. Is Andrew going to open for you again? No, I asked him. Um, he is somewhere. I don't, he's doing, yeah, no, he usually opens. He's great. Andrew Slater's awesome. Um, and then we are together in Batavia, Illinois, and uh, Baltimore, Maryland in December. All that stuff is at lizmealy.com. And I think that's. I only I go to B cities. Yes. Batavia, <laughs> Baltimore, Berlin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's really good. Okay, that's good. We have a. I don't know why it's B cities, but we've, we've done something. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then I, you know, I'm doing my reading at, um, in Angel on November 10th. And, uh, I just, I got together with my director today and like, we're putting some tech in place, like, like placeholder tech, but it's so much more fun with sound effects. <laughs> um, instead of just me talking for an hour. I love it. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, write to us at two non doctors at gmail.com. It's the number two non forward doctors and it's uh at two non doctors on twitter and youtube and at two non drs on you on instagram yeah um googly googs yeah f yeah i mean you know we do this every week and i i just went oh fuck <laughs> believe me i've been there do you want me to go first uh actually i um yep you can, but I, I did Google something. I saved myself there. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of you. Um, Thank you. I feel like the last couple of months, everything has been about my skin. Um, I think I <laughs> fucked it up somehow because, you know, earlier in the summer, I was getting constant heat rash. I did get heat rash the week of my taping. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Luckily, I got it on a Tuesday and it was healed by like Saturday. Oh. And then I filmed on uh Sunday. Sorry, I haven't had a zit on my chest in 24 years. And I'm just like, I'm like <laughs> is it, this is redder than it's not actually it's not even like bumpy. It's just red. But I'm like, yeah. what is that? Why? <laughs> you can but you can put some like, you know how you can put like what green stuff and then you put concealer on it or whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. I mean, like, but it's just like, of course, your skin's like, fuck you. <laughs> Did I tell you, I rem so, I mean, these are fake nails that I'm going to take off soon from my taping, but, mm. um, my nails were really like, I, they grew really long when I was like in college or whatever. And I got this commercial. I remember I booked a commercial and, um, I knew what I was going to wear for this commercial or whatever. It was like, you know, low budget commercial. And in the middle of the night, I scratched my, myself. And when I woke up, I had this gash across my chest. And it was, I did it to myself, like with my thumbnail. And I was like, what? Like truly God. like cut skin out of like, like it looked like I got attacked, but I knew it was me. And so then I was like, no, because I was going to have like a little V-neck. And then I had to, I had like a, my 
I don't think that commercial ever got released. It was like a like a turtleneck sweater because I was like, it looked like someone attacked me. Um, <laughs> stupid. But but anyway, I've had all these issues with heat or ash and it coming back. And then there were like Googles about that. But my skin has just never been the same. And so I, it looks like semi fine, right? But it's really dry. Like, like, so this is where I was getting heat rash around my nose and like down the side of my cheek, like right here. And even right now, this is kind of itchy. It's not bad or red, but, and it's not heat rash. It's just kind of like a weird rash, but it's also really fucking dry. So soft, soft, soft. And this feels like sandpaper. It's, and I'm, and like, if I do put makeup on it, you can, you can kind of see it's dry. It's driving me nuts. Um, so, you know, I'm moisturizing, I'm trying not to do anything, but I, you know, I use a retinoid, a tretinoid or whatever that stuff. And I wasn't using it for weeks to try to like heal my skin. And I thought it was fine. Put it on last night. It was awful. But the biggest thing is I got all this free stuff and I've heard all this stuff about nanaminicide, nine, not niacinamide i can't the fuck it i had it in my head and i can't i just have to spell it because it's n-i-a-c-i-n-a-m-i-d-e i think I, you had a very gallant is that the word effort and i think that's might actually be correct and i don't think anyone knows that word i don't think it's you know niacinamide you. niacinamide yes okay that so that is much. yeah it, yeah sure so anyway, um, skin fine, skin fine, go through all this heat rash, and then I've kind of pared down my skin stuff to almost nothing, like just like, you know, SPF and, and moisturizer. And I thought I was better, so I had all this free stuff, and I've heard all this nice stuff about ni niaminicide. I, I lost it again. Anyway, I think I'm allergic to it, or my skin is so fucked up it can't handle it. I don't know, but I started getting rashes again because of it. So I've had to just put that stuff to the side, but I had the only way that I really started to connect that it might also have something to do with that is some, like some, you know, skin influencer was like, Oh, a lot of people can't handle it. Like it's too strong. So I, I wanted to know what the side effects are. And so it's a form of vitamin B3, but it can cause side effects of your face. So which it could cause redness, um, like a, a flushing around the eyes, nose, and cheeks, itching um, on the face, burning sensation on the face. An allergic reaction can cause it can cause an allergic reaction to anybody that's has skin allergies and just like people with sensitive skin, which I have. It just causes skin irritation. And then it says um, uh, basically high concentrates, which this was like ten percent. But even like I, it was in a toner. I didn't realize it was in this toner, and like immediately I put it on. I was like, Oh, that don't feel good. And then I look and it has like, it didn't, it didn't say what percentage, but I think I'm, I'm either allergic to it and, or my skin is already so inflamed from whatever the fuck went on this summer that I just can't handle it. But I keep getting either the heat rash has stopped now that it's not hot out, but I keep getting like itchiness. Like I had like a, it was really itchy and I had a slight rash last weekend when I was in the weekend, the previous weekend when I was in Chicago and I didn't do anything other than put that niamin aside. No, I lost it. Damn. Mm. Um, so it's just, I don't know. My, it's so weird because I feel very fortunate that I have a pimple right now, but I have had very little acne in the last year, even though my I feel like it was my diet that caused the acne and then I was eating better and then I fell off deeply, just oh, deep. No. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Half of it's Evan's fault. The other half is just stress and being like, I love, I love ice cream, but my skin has actually been pretty good. And I've always, I don't know if you're like this, but like most of my life from like a teenager up until like a couple of years ago, I would be like, if I just didn't break out every week, I would be happy. And I would remember the weeks where my skin looked good. And I was like, I am going to the same way that you would have a good hair day. I'd be like, I'm not going to let anything take, bring me down because my skin looks so good. And this is all I've ever wanted. Or my hair looks perfect. And the world is going to know I have beautiful hair. But and, and my skin has looked really good and I've had tried to appreciate it. And now I'm 
I'm breaking out rashes and it's like I would I would love a pimple. Like I would trade a pimple for half my skin. I just I don't know what's going on with my body. <laughs> um and I'm still behind behind the podcast sending you all this perimenopausal shit. <laughs> so I'm just putting this, I'm putting this in the bag of it where I'm just like I, I don't have to tell you I'm 65 and this is what my life is now. And I was like fine, you're old. What? You're like fine. <laughs> you're so- <laughs> I wish we could publish our text messages because it's just this, but you're angrier. <laughs> I, know. I know. There's something like about like there's something sweet about your face that I don't get as angry talking to you in person, like or face to face. But over yeah. text, I'm just like, I'm like, fine, you're fucking perimenopausal, you old bitch. <laughs> I'm like, this doctor believes in me. This doctor believes in me, and you're like, I cannot. I cannot. So yeah, I'm going. I'm going through some skin change which they actually say you know i mean forget the perimenopause just in general because of our hormones always changing just like every couple of years almost and and whatever that that things that worked before might not work you become more sensitive you know blah 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 but i'm having i'm having a weird skin summer sorry to hear it thank you thank you i do blame evan yeah i do too (laughs) What's your Googles? I, I Googled, um, why does my right shoulder hurt after I eat? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. We are like, I know we're, I know we always talk about how dumb we are, but there is so funny where I'm just like, I don't know. I'm putting all this shit on my face and I'm getting rashes and I can't figure it out. And you're like, when the moon is out, why do I feel like I can't dance the same way? <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't say right shoulder. The original Google is why does my shoulder hurt after I eat? And it doesn't always hurt, but it's just a weird, I've noticed I'm like, I'll, I'll get like pain. Um, and then the answer, the quick answer is um, when your gallbladder is inflamed. I don't know what I've done to my gallbladder. I don't know what a gallbladder does. And swollen, it irritates your phrenic nerve. Your phrenic nerve stretches from the abdomen through the chest and into your neck. So each time you eat a fatty meal, it aggravates the nerve and causes referred pain in your right shoulder blade. Weird. Shut up. Yeah. What, can we Google what a gallbladder does? Cause sure, yeah, let's do that. I don't get... Because, like, I wonder what it is. A fatty meal? Like, what's an example of a fatty meal? Burger with cheese? Fries? Okay. <laughs> um... AI summation is pain in your right shoulder after eating could be due to a number of possible causes, gallbladder issues. Um, Okay, the gallbladder is a small pear-shaped organ that stores and releases bile to help digest fat. It's located in the upper right abdomen attached to the liver's undersurface. Okay. But what does it do? The gallbladder stores and releases bile, a fluid produced by the liver that helps digest fats, excrete cholesterol you just read what you read again (laughs) no no no, this is is the function you said what does it do and i'm reading the function oh oh, i thought you just were rereading what you just read but like you you dumb bitch you don't listen you don't listen this is why you're gonna (laughs) fail the test tonight okay um um okay excretes cholesterol and has anti um microbial antimicrobial properties when you eat the gallbladder squeezes bile into the small intestine through a common bile duct the more fat you eat, the more bile is released. Mm. So it's bile screwing up my nerves. So maybe it's, have you, do you feel like you've been eating a fattier diet? Are you? I mean, it was only like once recently, but I've had it before in the past. And so it's, maybe I had something fatty. I don't remember. I, I generally think I eat pretty healthy, but like, you know, I'll get takeout and that'll have grease and I can't control how much grease because the curry mm. here is actually, I think their sauce is oil <laughs> just generally in the, in, yeah. in the UK, like Indian food has a lot of oil in it. Um, so maybe it's the, that. The, gall, the gallbladder is a sack located under your liver. I don't know. I just, if I was the gallbladder, I was like, could we not call me a sack? Like it really... <laughs> Like I do a lot of I do a lot of heavy lifting. Please don't call uh, me a sack. I don't know how doctors are doctors. Stuff like that grosses <laughs> me out. Bile oh. is a pretty rough term as well. Bile, because you picture just black syrup or something. Bile. Yeah. 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 What is bile? And then. Um, <laughs> 
Hold on. What is bile? There was also something else I wanted to bring up. Mm-hmm. Bile is a fluid produced by the liver, but what kind of fluid? Made mm-hmm. up of water, electrolytes, bile salts, cholesterol, bile rubin, lecithin, amino acids, and more. I need a cartoon that like explains bile to me. <laughs> For sure. This is amino interesting. Amino salts and lecithin. <laughs> And then, and then it's just like a sack that's just dancing. <laughs> um, it says, what is life after gallbladder removal? You can lead a perfectly normal life without a gallbladder. Your liver will still make enough bile to digest your food. But instead of it being stored in the gallbladder, it, oh, sorry for what I'm about to say. It drips continuously into your digestive system. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't, I, sorry, sorry, everybody. Um, but this is what you get with two non-doctors as they learn right before they're about to take the test. (laughs) (laughs) Um, all right. Two definite morons. Um, sorry, Um, what? No, that actually is an interesting experience. Now that you kind of know that, I would say the next time, because one of the things I learned that I never knew when I started to kind of pay attention to like my diet and take things out is, um, a sign of being allergic to a food is having a stuffy or drippy nose and having a sore throat. And I, I, I remember having moments where I was like, oh, I think I'm getting sick. And then, you know, you're not sick. You wake up the next morning and you're fine. And you're like, oh, that's weird. But now I will notice I'll eat something. Like I'll go out to eat and I'll eat something and my throat will be sore. And it's usually within 20, 30 minutes of you eating. And I'm like, ooh, I wonder what that was in this. Me- you know what I mean? You don't know because there's too many but things. To me, that sounds like as a non-doctor, here's my prognosis. Um, it sounds like it, it causes some acid in your stomach. And so it's like acid reflux causing your throat to hurt rather than an allergic reaction. Yeah, but I, true. But it, and and that's the problem with like the word allergy because like, most people, when you say you're allergic to something, they assume your throat's going to close as opposed to there's other reactions, right? Like this, a rash is an allergic reaction to something, you know, um, um, I don't know. There's other, I can't think of it right now, but, but, um, the acid reflux is a response because your body doesn't tolerate, let's say not allergic, doesn't tolerate this food or whatever. And I think that's like I think you're just further down what that means, right? But it's still your body reacting to something that it doesn't like. Okay. That's, okay. That's my follow up. Any doctors out there want to comment or like, would you not even know where to start? <laughs> <laughs> Do you not know how to help us? <laughs> Ladies, I, I, I know. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. We did something. We did. We did it. Yeah. Um, thank you for listening. And thank you all our patrons. We Thanks appreciate sure. you all. Um, you can tip us. You can. Um, we got a two dollar tip. Hey, on, on on the YouTube's. That's um, great. I don't know when we get tips, so you're so good to be honest. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what if I was like, it was seventy five dollars? You get two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, no, thank you to everybody that watches us on YouTube, everybody that listens and everybody that supports us on Patreon. We appreciate you. Um, and after Maria tapes her TV thing, you'll have two less stressed non-doctors. Yeah. And we'll be exactly the same, to be honest. Yeah, no, we'll still Um, (laughs) forget to do our goals. Yeah, exactly. All right. See you guys next week. Bye.